Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're going to get the bodywork done for the frog. At this stage of the build, I tend to largely ignore the build order of the manual and kind of make it up as I go along. Mainly because waiting for paint to dry between steps is a bit of a pain. It's better to have a few things running at the same time. We're going to be working on steps 27 to 32, which for all intents and purposes is the end of the manual. Right, step 27, and we can at least start by following the instructions. The driver consists of Z1, 3, 4 and 6. It makes up the head with the mounting plate and the shoulders. To hold them together, we use two 3x10 self-tappers. First, the mounting plate slots into the bottom of the head. Then the back of the head goes on with the locking plate in position. Next, we just install one of the screws through the back. To attach the head to the shoulders, we just use another screw. Couldn't be easier, really. The driver assembly then just gets attached to the chassis with some double-sided tape. But wait, before we do that, we need to paint him. And if we're going to do that, we might as well fix the two big holes in his helmet and the ugly seam around the sides. What I use for most Tamiya plastic is PlastiWeld. It's very thin like water and melts the plastic on contact. What we do is loosen the screw that holds the head together and put a couple of drops using some tweezers to apply to the seam. Then very gently re-tighten the screw. We might as well pop a drop in the bottom of the mounting plate too, just so it's 100% solid. We'll pop the screw in a turn or so as well, just so we've got something to hold on to when we do the painting. Now we're not quite done yet, there's a hole in the top of the helmet we need to fill. The easiest thing to do is use some of the sprue that the helmet came from. It just so happens that if we cut a bit off from the side, it's a good fit in the hole. So all you need to do is pop it in and apply a spot of PlastiWeld. The hole in the back of the helmet is a little bit bigger, but we can still cut bits of the sprue and stuff them in. A little bit of trimming here and there and a few taps with the screwdriver handle forces them in. We want to see if we can fill as much of the surface as possible with the plastic. Then apply some PlastiWeld. Next we'll need to sand it smooth, but it's going to take a couple of hours for the PlastiWeld to fully harden. So rather than wait, we'll make a start on the body shell. Before we paint the shell, there's a few things we need to do. First up, while the shell is nice and rigid with all the extra plastic, we need to drill some holes. There's a 4mm at the front for the front mount, two 5mm holes for the rear mounts, and four 3mm holes for the light pods and rear wing. I recommend starting with a small drill bit under 2mm and then working up in size. Now unlike the original kit, the shell has an overspray film. This means we can outline the bits of the shell that we need to trim. The lines can be hard to see on camera, but they're also pretty tricky to spot by eye too. What we do is use a fine tip permanent marker, like a sharpie, and trace around the edges of the shell to make it clear what needs to be removed. When done, it makes it really easy and clear to see what needs to go. The first bit of trimming is to cut away the skirt around the bottom. Don't worry about getting right up to the edges just yet, we just need clear access to the cutouts. For the curves, I tend to score along the line with a brand new blade. If you use a slightly blunt one, it's all too easy to slip and score where you don't want to, or just as lightly stab a finger. Be careful and score around all the curvy bits. Now we can use some scissors to cut up to the scored lines, being very careful not to go too far. Then we just snap them clean off. It's so much easier than working away with a small pair of scissors. For the motor cutout, we'll divide it up into sections and break them out one at a time. You should be left with a fairly clean edge. Any little nubs can be sanded back by hand or with a sanding drum on a Dremel. The top of the windscreen is a little bit tricky. First we can go around the edge scoring the plastic. Next we could just press a knife blade through, but it's difficult to have any sort of control. What we'll do is drill a few holes next to each other as a starting point. Then open up the hole with the knife so it's just big enough that we can get in a small pair of scissors. Now we can carefully cut to the corners and break out the plastic. We should end up with a fairly tidy cutout. But as usual, if there's any lumps and bumps, they can easily be sanded back. That just leaves the bottom edge, which just needs to be trimmed back to the line using some scissors. The wing gets the same treatment, draw along the lines, then use the trimming techniques to cut away the plastic. 
Now before we clean and mask the body, it's a good idea to pop it on the chassis. You really don't want to find you need to trim bits here and there after you've added the paint. And as a good example, the motor cutout is touching a motor can. So before we move on, I'm going to open the cutout a little bit with a Dremel, just so there's some clearance. While the body's still clear, it's really easy to see what's happening. While we've been doing that lot, I've sanded the bits of plastic we added to the helmet and given it a quick coat of primer. Now I haven't gone completely crazy smoothing it out, as it's going to be hard to see in any detail through the windscreen. There's still some traces of a seam, but it'll do. Next he's off for some paint, and we'll return later. Next we need to thoroughly wash the body with dish soap and water, then mask it. The manual has a nice guide if you want to copy the box art. We're going to be more or less following it, but not exactly. For best results, use our nice high quality masking tape like the Tamiya stuff, and not cheap decorators tape. We want to start with the darkest colour first, which in this case is black. So I've masked the windows and the rest of the body, and blocked the front with some paper, just to save a bit of tape. After a few coats, we have this. Next is the line around the bottom. So I've adjusted the tape a little bit. The paint I'm using here is a blue metallic, which is fairly translucent, so it's going to take a good few coats to build up. And there we go. The only reason I went for this blue is you really don't need much, and I had some left over from another project. It really wasn't worth buying a whole extra tin of paint. Next then, we've got the main part of the body, which needs painting in white. When done, it should look like this. Don't forget to paint the wing too, it's just a solid white if you want to copy the box art. On the side of the body we've got the light pods, now they're made up of two Z7s and two Z5s. Usually they're only held together with the 3x12 self tapper mounting screws, but for a bit of added strength I'm going to plasti weld them together before they go off the paint. It's just a case of holding the halves together and applying a few drops. It'll run into the seam and make them solid parts. Next we have all the decals to deal with. I'm going to do one in the video so you can see how I apply them, especially the larger ones. A good example are the window nets. First we carefully cut the decal out, trying to cut as close to the print without actually cutting into it. Next we test fit, mainly to get an idea of its position, and make sure we won't need to do anything fancy. Generally with Tamiya all the decals are nice and straightforward to fit. Before we can stick the decal on, we're going to need to peel off the overspray film. I think it's a rite of passage where almost everyone will have very carefully applied all the decals, only to notice later that they've stuck them all to the film. It's really quite annoying. To make it easier to position the decal, rather than peel the backing off and just going for it, we'll peel some of the backing and trim a section off. Now we can position the decal, sliding it around, then when it's perfect, stick down the exposed part, then peel the rest off. With a bit of practice you'll get every decal perfect every time. Sometime later, actually quite some time later, we have the body all decaled up. Now I did get a bit carried away, I started to fit the large decal to the wing and we still need to screw it to the body. Luckily I hadn't sealed it all down before I realised. It stretched a little bit where I had to peel it back, but not to worry, it's all fixable. To fit the wing we used two M3x10s, two M3 flange nuts, and two washers. Now the washers go under the screw heads, then we fit the screws through the wing and into the posts in the body. If you follow the instructions, the nuts then just go on the inside. But to add a bit more load spreading, I'm going to use an extra couple of washers under the nuts. It's almost certainly going to be fine as Tamiya intended, but a few extra won't hurt. Now we can nip them up, but don't overdo it. If you really squash the shell, it'll go brittle where it's being squeezed. They just want to be snug, plus an extra little tweak. The final decal can be smoothed down now, but because it was slightly stretched when I peeled it back, it's not going to sit nicely. The handy thing with vinyl decals is they really don't want to stay stretched. If we very carefully warm it up, it's going to shrink right back. We don't want to overdo it though, the body also has a fairly low threshold for heat. But if we do a little bit at a time, it's quite manageable, and we end up with a perfectly flat decal. By now the light pods are nice and solid, so we'll pop the 3x12 self tappers in a turn or so, so we've got something to hold on to, then we'll give them a coat of paint. The main body is black, and the front is yellow to look like the light covers. 
The head and shoulders have also been painted, so they're ready to go back together too. The light pods now just get screwed to the side of the body, but I'm going to add a washer under the heads to protect the plastic and spread the load just a little bit. Just like the wing, we need to be careful that we don't over tighten them. Just snug plus a little bit is all they really need. On the front of the lights, we need to fit the yellow round decals. We didn't fit them before we fitted the pods to the body as it's really difficult to get them level. All we do is peel a bit of the backing off and stick them on. Very nice. For the driver, all we need to do is pop the head on the shoulders and fit a 3x10 self tapper. It doesn't really need to be super tight, just enough so the head doesn't spin like it's on the Exorcist. To fit the driver, we need some of the foam tape from the kit. It needs to be trimmed up so it covers the bottom of the tabs on the base. It doesn't need to be all that accurate, as long as there's a bit on each side it'll work just fine. It's not like the driver's all that heavy. If we pop the driver on the chassis, we can see there's a fair bit of area he can be stuck down to. It probably doesn't matter, we could probably just stick him down in the middle and I'm sure it'll be fine. But why guess when we can fit the body and make sure? With the body on, we can see where he looks best. Now I think with him as far forward as he can go is good. A bit more visible through the windows. So body off again and we can peel the backing off the foam tape and stick him down. Now usually I'd recommend cleaning the surfaces with some 99% IPA to clean off any oils and greases from the plastic. But as I'm filming this, everyone's using it to make hand wash and it costs a small fortune if you can find any at all. I'm sure it'll do just fine though. Now I think that's going to be enough for this week. We've got the bodywork done. All that's left to do before the test run is sort out the remaining electronics. With the body done, we now know how much space and where we can cram it all in so it's neat and tidy. Next week then, we'll finish up and go for a quick test run before we start looking at some mods and upgrades. As always then, thanks for watching. Like if you liked, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys.